headquarters here and it's time for episode number 11 we're all the way up to number 11 of my enter the chill zone demo videos and today I've got one of my personal favorite bases this is my Dingwall NG2 uh, uh, now they get good signature series model I changed the pickguard on it because I wanted to have a white pickguard on it and um, just change the look a little bit to make it a little bit more personal to me and I'm kind of a happy-go-lucky guy, and I think that this is such a happy bass. Um, it's interesting that this instrument is used in a lot of heavy music, a lot of the de-jank, de-jank, jank, jank kind of music, and that's cool. It's amazing. It's a, it's a testament to how successful the model is. But um, for me, I do different stuff than that. You know, I do rhythm and blues and funk and soul and country music and all kinds of stuff, and it works perfectly for me in, in that um, context. Um, I use it live pretty much, you know, in, in terms of um, my, the instruments that I take on my primary gig with the Johnny O band. This is probably in the top three, so it gets used uh, a lot. And um, the extended range of the um, of the lower strings really behaves well in our PA system. And the low fundamental, the way that it sits in our subs, has a really clear, deep, and powerful fundamental that. Um, you know, the, and, and, and the way that it has kind of like a, definitely a, um, a, a modern sound. You know, it's got that. You know, those guys in my band call it the Seinfeld bass. So it's got that real super kind of great modern um, active kind of sound to it. And they really like it. So, you know, that's a big part of it is um, bringing an instrument that the entire band uh, as a whole likes and it complements the music that the band is playing and everything. So, um, yeah, you know, I don't use it for the super heavy stuff. I use it for funk and R&B and stuff. And it, uh, it does a fantastic job. And I love it. <laughs> this great five position um, pickup selector switch so I'm going to start in the back position next position up which is the series position or mid boost as they call it and that's the one that I use all the time I don't ever use any other position but this one I've just found a love for that position, and it's the position that I use always. I never change it. Then there's the middle position. Starting to get very big. Next one. You know, that one's pretty good. Uh, I could probably use that one. Oh, it's actually four positions, not five. So that's the front one. Uh, the reason I probably don't use it is because it gets a little bit too big. You know, for my for my taste, I like that second position. And then it's got a three band uh, preamp on it, which is currently not even engaged, and I seldom use any of it. But um, to hear what it sounds like, this is with um, the bass control. <laughs> So 
tons of clear, clean, active bass. This is a mid-range control. It's a great sweep of mid range, and then the treble. And that, that's just. Get a, get a, get a Chris Squire thing going. So, you know, it's just a wonderful sounding instrument. It's great that it has the flexibility of the EQ. If anything, I boost a little smidgen of the bass and um, a little smidgen of the mid-range. And that's only rarely. You know, if I'm on stage and I'm in a certain environment, you know, every room sounds different, every environment sounds different. Sometimes you need a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that. But I don't go hog wild with the EQ. I never have, I never will. <laughs> I use this uh, second position pickup uh, position, the, the series position, all the time. And uh, I'm happy as a clam. to get used to um for me it was really easy to get used to it was um you know a little weird at first especially playing up high because yeah, everything's kind of going that way up high so reaching this finger down in there you typically want to put it you know it wants to be more forward so you have to tuck everything back and kind of give your hand a little bit of a yeah, so it's a little bit of an adjustment to do that stuff up high, but um, I don't really play that much up high like that. I'm not like, you know, doing the solo virtuoso bass player uh, lead bass role in about 99% of what I do as a professional musician. Um, I do solo in the show, and I don't seem to have a problem going up and doing a few little things in that range. But again, even when I'm soloing, I'm usually down in the nuts or in the um, in the low end because I think that that just has a way more powerful impact to the audience. You know, as soon as you start to go high on a bass guitar, it kind of just it kind of goes limp, um, in my opinion. But when you go low and do your solo, um, it just gets big in the PA, you know, and it's it's a really powerful thing that says, here is the bass, and this is what the bass sounds like, you know? You know, we're doing this tune uh, th This tune called Time, and uh, that's the bass line. down I it's in the key of D I drop down to that lower octave and 
it totally lights up the PA. Like, it gets so huge. It's such a great moment in the show. <laughs> solo feature in and um, being in the key of D too often <laughs> um, and uh, you know I've gotten used to it because I've been playing it a lot and, and like I said it just does a fantastic job for me in the live application with my band um, I love the vibe of it I love the bright yellow color with the white pick guard you know I think it's a really kind of a, um, a happy bass um, maybe my happy the happiest of all my basses <laughs> so I don't know what else to say other than to compliment Sheldon Dingwall and his staff because this instrument is uh, is an overseas import instrument but they have a great they have the system down they have it dialed in they they manufacture them overseas then every single one of them goes to their factory in Saskatoon in Canada of course and um, they do the final setup fret dressing and go through the instrument and do all the quality checks and all the um, you know, final setup and preparation before it goes out. So this instrument came to me perfectly set up, and it still is perfectly set up. I've not done a damn thing to it. I've not turned the truss rod. I've not done anything with the um, with the frets. You know, there's been no shrinkage of the of the fingerboard. There's been no movement of the neck. Okay, there's been no crack, snapple, pop, um, snap, crackle, pop in the electronics. And the bridge has stayed put, and all I can say is it's held up great. And for an instrument that gets a lot of use, as hard as I play, I mean, you just watched me uh, play as hard as I do with my right hand, not every bass holds up. They just don't, you know, um, for whatever reason, for lots of different reasons. Uh, it's got the hip shot tuners on there, which are great, ultralight hip shot tuners, balances perfectly, feels great, looks great. Um... It behaves real well in the PA system, I mentioned that. So I've only got uh, really great things to say about this instrument, and that's a fact, Jack. And of course, Sheldon is a wonderful guy, an absolutely cool dude, and an absolutely uh, uh, important innovator in the world of um, bass guitars these days. Anybody that's ever met Sheldon will tell you the same exact thing. They have a great thing on their website that I think deserves mention and compliment is that every single, uh, their website is actually like a social media platform. It's kind of like the Daily Funk Club website where when you make a comment, you can comment on any of the instruments um, in the spec area and it's almost like a bulletin board. So you can make, if, if you're considering buying this bass, you can go there and you can make a comment like and ask a question and Sheldon or one of his people will answer that question right there. 
and then you know you get your answer and it's posted publicly so a, a lot of the maybe the common questions are already there for you to see so that's such a great thing because if you're getting ready to drop whatever it is these things cost I don't even know I know that they're very highly in demand and they might be back ordered because they're popular and um, you know I think it's at least a few months wait to get one if not more maybe six months but uh, it's worth the wait but anyways going back to that kind of you know comment section on their website that's such a great thing because um, you, know, you saved up your money you're getting ready and you're about to pull the trigger on a base you might have some questions you can actually get an answer from the people that built the base you know and um, you can rest assured you know what I mean that uh, that it's a brand that cares about each and every customer and and offers that kind of uh, support and interaction so I encourage you to check out the uh, the, the, the Dingwall website and uh, the NG2 is an absolute home run winner for me now the rig that I'm using I just want to mention one more time this is the last video I'm going to use this particular rig and before I switch to another one I'm going to switch to a Mesa Boogie rig for the next series of um, videos but I have been using the Galen Kruger MB Fusion 800 head and the bare amplification uh, ML mid-loaded ML 112 cab for the last five videos and uh, this video this um this head it, it gets a lot of use by me since I've gotten it um, because I like the I like the tube preamp there's a chiminess to it that I really like and there's no question about it that it is a really nice contributing factor to the overall tone my overall tone when I'm performing so I use this thing live a lot it's got plenty of power I push two big cabinets with it no problem um, and I really like it a lot I use the EQ pretty much flat as you can see uh, almost completely flat and um, you know the amp has been holding up and doing a great job on my gigs so um, you know kudos to GK I also use some GK cabinets, the CX series, and I have to mention right now a big compliment to GK on those cabinets because I've been using them a lot and they are wonderful. Uh, and then the ML mid-loaded cabinet just has a great um, different kind of um, full range sound without a bullet tweeter or a horn in it. It has a coned uh, mid-high frequency driver in it. So it doesn't have that harsh, brittle top. It has a nice softly rounded off uh, top end and if if um, anybody is into like slap bass or playing with a pick then you know what I'm talking about how those tweeters can get um, oppressive very quickly and this one um, it just has a really great full range sound you know it's a very great uh, full range sound and the the drivers that he's using the low frequencies drivers that he's using are um, really really stout sturdy not much excursion it's tight and it generates a ton of low end even from the 112 cab, I also have the 15 cab over there. Okay, I better sign off because I could literally sit here and play this bass for you all day long. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Rock on.